Hi, hello again. Been a little while of uh, no videos. So, so many projects to do, and a heck of a lot more added to my to do list from the other half over this COVID lockdown business. Anyway, I purchased a bunch of solar panels, uh, 350, uh, no, 320 watt or 335 watt even solar panels uh, a little while ago, and then I set about the task of finding a new inverter M. PPT solar charge controller thing to uh, hook it up and charge my battery so I came across this one it looked good on spec uh, this is the eSmart 3 and I've gone for the 60 amp version um, so this is it so if we open it up Bit of a shame that they didn't actually seal the box properly when they sent it, but never mind. It came from China and it came in quite good time. Instruction manual, loosely throw it aside. In brackets, a screwdriver and a thermal probe for the batteries. And here's the business. Now, I did um, order the Wi Fi version, but they had no stock, so sadly I haven't got that but never mind so first impressions this is a nice little box it's quite a weighty box it's listed as three kilos on the packaging it came from a Germany uh, by uh, DHL or somebody um, so yeah so now we've got to set about working this out and getting the panels on the roof there's only one on the roof at the moment um, oh, something loose in there. Maybe it's just a solder ball. I'll have to open up and have a look. Uh, so I shall do that next. So the terminal block off there, or terminal cover block off. There are nice meaty wires in there, and uh, nice beefy uh, terminal blocks. That's nice. Things that are rattling around is a piece of uh, aluminium a piece of plastic and some other small piece of something or other so nothing too major but uh, best to check these I guess when you first get them out of the pack just to make sure you haven't got anything like that because that piece of aluminium could short something out in there anyway minor minor business so I'm gonna go and hook it up on the bench now to the panel that's on the roof uh, we'll see what sort of power is coming through it. I, I went for the 60 amp. I was originally looking at the 40 amp. I've got eight of the uh, 335 watt panels, but I wasn't going to put them all on the roof uh, of the office, which is where we are at the moment, uh, which is out in the back garden. Um, I was going to put some on the house as well, but then I thought for the price difference of the 40 amp to the 60 amp, heck, just it's like 20 quid. So buy the bigger version, bit of redundancy never hurts um, and I may put all the panels on which this should cope with um, anyway I hook it up, I plug it in and we'll see what happens ok so I've quickly rigged this up the mess, uh, the state of the desk is a complete mess so these are lithium batteries, they are lithium, lithium phosphate batteries so live uh, PO4 batteries, 12 volt one, just a quick test to see what's happening. So I'll put them on these handy uh, connectors. Anyway, enough about that. So there's one panel on at the moment, and what I'd note is that these power themselves from the battery rather than the panel, which is slightly different to the other inverter that I've got up there, the uh, MPT7210A, which is a boosting one uh, rather than this one, which is uh, it goes down rather than up, basically. Anyway, so it's saying my battery voltage is 13.9, it's about right. Uh, wait for the camera to readjust here. There's not very good uh, screenshots of this. Don't know if I can get any better. But, uh, Oh, it's better when it goes off anyway. So it's charging at 7.8 amps off one cell. So that's not bad. One solar panel. Uh, next setting is uh, 105 watts is going into the panel at the moment. Uh, and next 
no load because there's no load connected to it and no load current no load watts obviously no watt hours uh, load type is off that's fine gel type battery well yeah these these batteries are made to be charged as a gel type battery so that's fine um, real time clock in there uh, gives you the time date and back to the panel voltage so we'll see how this goes it's on constant voltage at the moment um, so yeah looking good so far we'll come back to it in a little while. so we're back again we've got annoying beeping from this I'll talk to you over that in a minute anyway so uh, it's charged the battery so we're on float which I don't know if you can see it but it says up here uh, CF so it's, it's, the battery's on float, so it's fully charged it. Uh, they're only 20 amp batteries, these ones, it's one of those. Um, quite decent batteries. But it took about an hour, uh, and it was saying about 7 amps it was going into it, so we can roughly assume it took about 7 amps to fully charge it. So then I thought, well, wow, it's sat there doing nothing now. So I got this little 12 volt inverter out. Uh, battery backup UPS sort of thing it's meant to be but I modified it some time ago for going camping so it never gets plugged in now there's no battery in it anymore I just uh, run it off one of these batteries but at the moment I've connected it to the load of this MPPT solar charge controller and then from the mains on that I've connected it to one of my power tool batteries uh, the Parkside little specials, a 4 amp battery, a 20 volts a lithium battery. So that's getting charged up, and that's why this is beeping away, saying it's got no mains input. So I don't know if you can see down there, um, battery voltage coming in, so the load out of the, the inverter a charge controller is 13.92. It's currently consuming 4.3 amps, roughly makes it around 60 watts which if we come up here this is the uh, panel voltage we're looking at uh, but it's the amps on it sorry but it says PV up here so uh, so it's 1.5 ish amps coming from the panel uh, around 60 ish watts uh, battery is 13 point Eight, so it's roughly right. Current going into the battery is around four, four to five amps. It's fluctuating a little bit, but I guess that's the MPPT part of it. It's trying to work out the best power ratio, so it's constantly changing depending on the sunlight out there. Watts, uh, load voltage. Yeah, we know that. And what's going into the load is around the. Uh, well, it's fluctuating quite a bit, isn't it? but I'd say around the four and a half, five amp marks it's roughly sticking to. So that's pretty much all coming from the panel then, although it goes via the battery, then into the load. Um, that's not bad, is it? And to be fair, I didn't pay very much for the panels. I got them dirt cheap. I've done a bit of a deal. They're, they're used panels. Um, they're under eight years old, I think it was. They're 335 watt, they're made by Sun Edison, I think it's called, which is a company that's gone bust. Um, but anyway, they're on someone's roof, a contractor took them down. We've done a bit of a deal for some of the uh, laptop batteries that I get. Uh, and they worked out to like nothing eventually, uh, once we've done that deal. So, happy days. And that gives me around 3 kilowatts extra of uh, sun power, hopefully. So... This is all lashed up at the moment, as you can see, for testing purposes. But we'll be getting the other panels up on the roof soon. And then, uh, I guess I'm going to have to get the spot welder out and start spot welding all these lovely 18650s. Got, I've got hundreds of uh, sat there waiting for this. So, uh, oh, happy days. Um, well, I guess that's it for now. I'll, I'll do another catch-up video on this little... Uh, solar charge controller soon but so far it looks pretty good um, 
There is an RS-485 port down the bottom, I should mention, which you can plug into a computer via an adapter, uh, which we'll make up later on, uh, and then you can set all the parameters of here and you can customise the battery charging and all sorts, so it'll be ideal for lithium uh, 18650 cells. Uh, but anyway, that's it for now. So, uh, keep safe. Uh, and go build something fun.